Hey guys, uh, as promised, I told you I'd give you an update on my little Game Gear project uh, for my college buddies, but uh, also for the benefit of anyone else trying to figure out how to do this, you can attain, obtain uh, not working Game Gears on eBay for fairly cheap, and I got three of them here that I'm going to fix up. So just the first step would be to get the thing apart. I've already done it once, which is why I've marked it, because there's four or five different layouts on the inside, so you need different capacitors depending on which layout it is. So this one's C, which is actually a VA5 layout. Anyway, so I'm going to take the battery covers off, and there's six uh, Phillips head screws, one here, one here. Here, 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 and then the last thing you got to do is get the security screw out, which Sega and Nintendo use quite a bit to keep you out, but obviously in the age of the internet you can get anything, which I got uh, on Amazon. So we'll do that first. It's a little tight, so I'm using a drill just to get nice downward pressure on it. So it'll come right out, and uh, since I have the bit now, I'm not going to toss this and put in a regular screw. Once I fix it, hopefully it won't need to save it anyway. Anyway, that's all for now. Alright, now I've got all the screws out, we're ready to open this bad boy up. So you want to lift from the bottom because there's this metal hinge back here and also the uh, connections from the front motherboard to the power board and the sound board. Uh, so there's three things you have to disconnect. So here's the power. I'll just pull this off. Then here's the sound over here. There's two connections here. So just be careful. And you can't really goof it up because they're all different sizes. So when you go to put it back together. That one's a little tight. There we go. Alright, so we've got the, the back free from the front. Uh, just a note. So on this one, this is the, as I said, the VA5 layout. Uh, which means that it's got different capacitors in slightly different places. Some of the same ones, but some different ones too. Anyway, so we're going to replace all of these beige or gray capacitors to improve the picture. Uh, I did test all of these before I ordered capacitors online, which you can get pre-made sets or, uh, you know, from different websites that have them ready, so you don't have to go through and order individual capacitors from websites. This is one of those from Mortoff Games. I'll put the link in the comments and uh, the description. Also, I'll put the link to uh, Stig's Game Room, which is how I learned how to fix the uh, soundboard. Anyway, so uh, you don't have to unmount the motherboard from the case unless uh, you want to clean the screen on the front if there's dust in there you want to get out. Also, if you replace all of the capacitors on the soundboard and still don't have any sound, the capacitors are under here and under this metal shielding which you have to take off. But um, if you still don't have any sounds, here's the speaker, uh, then you want to check the wire that connects the speaker, which is this one right here running along the edge, that connects to the soundboard, which was this little clip that we uh, disconnected. So I'm going to get started on this. Like I said, all of these did work uh, to some extent when I took them apart, the fur, or when I took them out of the package. But, uh, you know, the description said it was non-working, so I don't think this one had any sound at all. Uh, it did have a picture, uh, and uh, one of these would turn on and then turn off, and I reseated the cartridge in the slot and turned it back on a few times, and it did eventually work. Uh, one of these did have a very dim screen, which is one of the normal causes of bad capacitors uh, on the mother motherboard and uh, 
One of them had really good sound. I'm going to go ahead and replace the audio capacitors in all of them. Uh, two out of the three. Uh, one didn't have any sound, and one had very, very uh, quiet sound, when even when it was turned off. Okay, now that I've got my soldering iron all warmed up, uh, just a quick uh, explanation as to the procedure for doing this. Because there's a lot of them, I'll just do one, but uh, it, the ones on the motherboard are, are all the same, basically. Uh, as you can see here, if it focuses, uh, all of the capacitors are labeled, which makes it pretty easy to uh, order new ones and then replace them with the right uh, capacitance. So this one is, uh, there's several of these. This is uh, 10 microfarads and 16 volts. So uh, when you're doing these, you want to match up the microfarads exactly. Um, the volts could be equal to or greater. But uh, if you're ordering individual ones, you may as well just go ahead and get the uh, exact same rating. So these are surface mount capacitors with leads that come off and uh, are soldered to pads on the motherboard. If you can see that. And uh, also they do have a uh, positive and negative side, so you want to be mindful of that when you're replacing them. Uh, so when you are replacing them, you get the radial capacitors. Uh, they're pretty easy to do, and these are labeled as well. Uh, so here you can see it says, uh, maybe you can see 10 microfarads, 16 volts, and then there's a stripe on one side designating the negative side, and that lead will be shorter than the positive lead. So that's how you can tell. Now obviously we're going to snip these to uh, be shorter and sit down on the board nicely. Anyway, so to get this thing off you want to take a pair of needle nose pliers and hold the capacitor, the plastic part, and the actual capacitors are just glued to the motherboard so you can kind of wiggle them and they usually snap up. Now what you want to do to get the leads off without damaging anything is take your soldering iron and just heat up the pad on either side until it comes loose like that. So then you've got the old capacitor which is now garbage and Depending on how well you did, pads here ready for the new capacitor. And what you can do to make it a little bit easier on yourself is heat this, the pad up and add a dot more solder just so you have enough to attach the new capacitor. Too. Now obviously you don't want to connect that or touch anything else uh, with your soldering iron. You'll melt the chips, the board, whatever. So then you want to take your new capacitor and snip these leads pretty darn short. There's usually a jog in, in the negative lead, but there's a stripe on it too, so you really don't need to... Uh, be too concerned with the lead, it's just they make it obvious for you which is which. And because the pads are a little bit further apart, stretch the leads out a little bit. And then uh, take the leads down on the pads. And if you've got enough solder on there, just heat it up. And there you go. That's all for this section. All right, so this is what it looks like when the uh, motherboard is all done. Not my neatest job, but uh, uh, one thing I did forget to mention was that 
all of the uh, capacitors are marked with a plus sign for the positive lead and I actually put that first one on backwards so I had to take it off and fix it but uh, once you get them on there you can fold them down make them as flat as possible and that one there uh, it gets a little crowded over here and uh, it's important to leave these gold pads free of any uh, thing because that's where the, the case actually holds together so if you cover that up it's not going to fit back together right anyway so that's the motherboard up next is the soundboard okay so first thing you need to do is take this metal shielding off that uh, this is where the cartridge slips in uh, on the back so that is just held together by four little Phillips head screws off pretty easy. I'm gonna pop these in here so I don't lose them. Okay. And this is the soundboard over here. Over here is the power. Um, and uh, if you uh, luckily I don't have to mess with this I don't think so I'm not gonna do anything with that because it seems to be getting power just fine. Anyway this one is held down by uh, two Phillips head screws so I'm gonna take those out. And then uh, just kind of tilt it to pull this, the volume wheel out of the slot. Move that out of the way. So here's the volume. And then these uh, these are also surface mount capacitors, but they're a little bit different. Uh, so there's uh, 100 microfarad, 6 volt, there's 3 of those, and then 47 microfarad and 4 volts. And these ones uh, are a little bit trickier because the pads are actually underneath, uh, the leads are underneath the capacitor, and there's a tiny little solder pad on either side of it and again these are marked positive and negative so you can see there that's positive on this side and again it has the black stripe on the negative sides so uh, uh, one other thing just to keep it simple if you are going to do this make sure you do one at a time so you don't confuse uh, which capacitor goes where especially on the motherboard these ones are you know there's only five and there's only two different kinds so not too bad uh, I'm going to struggle to get these ones off and replace them. Okay, so we've got the audio capacitors replaced, and uh, I left a little bit more lead on these ones because it's kind of tight quarters with that metal shielding, and I'm going to have to bend them around a little bit. This one uh, was a real pain in the butt. Um, when I pulled the old capacitor off, it took most of the pad with it, so I've got it connected to just the corner of what was there uh, but as you can see there's the three 100s and then the 247s and again with the positive and negatives lined up correctly I hope looks like it all right let's try and get this bad boy back in here so yeah, get the volume wheel headphone jack into place stand these up. There we go. So, bend this one back over like that. Bend that one down like that. That should work. Okay. Get our two itsy bitsy screws all right here we are uh, all put back together see I've uh, 
put batteries in. Uh, the guy that sold these included all the pieces. I think this is for like the the magnifier mount. The one, the other, the first one I got didn't come with that. Also, the uh, link cover. I'm sure is a small piece that got lost very quickly when people were young. Anyway, so I'll put back together. We're gonna give this a shot, see what happens. sound but no picture oh there it is so let's try that again all right here now we're going in darkness let's see what happens I think we've fixed our problems. Great sound. Turn it all the way up, all the way down. Brightness, plenty of brightness. The lower you keep it, the uh, more battery you save. This thing will eat batteries like no other. Anyway, I got two more to go. Thanks.